So let's talk about um, the spread here. Um, in terms of your family relationships, there are some family planning issues. There's some family rifts, um, blockages in communication with whomever it is that you consider your family. Okay. This is a card about stress and strain, somewhat of a, um, I feel like it's almost like regrets, regrets about opportunities that have passed us by because we weren't quick enough on the uptake. Okay. This is a card about, you know, the apex of human emotional happiness. And I do feel that for a lot of you, this can play out in your family situation. There's some stress and strain within your family unit and you're trying to rectify this situation. Okay. And I feel that there is an impasse. There is somebody within your housing, within your family unit that is creating some type of discord within the, the relationship. It's sort of like both people are working at cross purposes with one another and there's a stalemate. There is a um, a lot of difficulty in moving forward and moving forward as a unit. So I do feel that it's um, it's creating a lot of discord. It's creating a lot of anxieties and a lot of is bringing about a lot of sadness and regrets. So this can play out. For example, if you're like um, if you're younger and you're watching this and you're still living with your parents, there might be situations in which family like parents are bickering, or they they might want to you know uh, seek separation, or there's something like that. There's some disjointed um, communication. Or there's some like talks about breaking up the family unit. Okay, for others of you, this can be people uh, being added into your family unit, into your physical place of living, or people leaving your current housing situation or within the family unit. So I definitely feel it is bringing about a little bit of sadness and regret. The good news is, um, both of these cards came out at the beginning of the month. So I feel like this is residual energy coming through from April. So if there has been a separation, if there has been some type of a something you counted on, something that brought you a lot of emotional happiness is no longer there. Like you feel like maybe I took it for granted. Maybe I let the opportunity pass me by and it won't come back around. I do feel that it is still within your power to try to fix this situation. Okay. Mercury in retrograde is also like, um, the, that portal to the past that opens up if there is something that is gnawing at you if there's something you feel that you could have done differently that um, could potentially bring you that total emotional happiness that you've been searching for it is really important for you to not give up push through and uh, try to fix this situation if you can especially if it pertains to family members people that you trust as if they were your family members or people that you are really deeply emotionally in love with or emotionally invested in okay it's not too late try to fix it mercury in retrograde is a good time for reconciliation as well if it is an ongoing issue or if it has been an ongoing issue okay um so in terms of the next cluster, what we have here is the chariot and the strength card. So going back to the initial message that um, um that I got across. Okay, so cancers, what I'm feeling is um, this is pretty much your month and what you decide to do or not do is going to be like, is going to solidify the rest of the year. This is a really, really powerful, potent month. And I don't know why that is. It could be planetary placement. Um, what I'm sensing is this, okay? We have your card as well as the strength card. And going back to the initial message that I mentioned, there's no excuses why you can't do something. So I feel like if you have been in a situation where other people around you were either um, chipping away at your self-esteem if it has been like, uh, you know, sometimes we can't really help the family that we're born into. Sometimes we can't help the types of parents that we have. We can't help the siblings that we, we have. We can't help who is going to be in our family unit. But with every social interaction, with everything that is in our lives that we can't help and we ha have no control over, it is teaching us a very, very important, valuable life lesson. So simply one of the lessons might be, you know, try to let go of things or people that are not good for you. If you can't fix it, let it go. All right. So that's a major, major life lesson that comes through for a lot of Scorpios this month. Um, 
Pisces as well, I feel. Sagittarius, strongly Sagittarius, because they're having their, their Saturn transit right now. And also with you, because, you know, um, I, I feel that letting go has been a, a major issue. But the other thing I'm sensing is you might be, I feel like for some of you, you might be have been brought up in a house environment where it's like a very negative attitude, where it's like, oh, don't strive for more, don't persevere, don't fight for things. We need to know our station in life. But the point here is that you have immense power of manifestation and the universe is forcing you to push through it, okay? So whatever obstacles are standing in your way, it's there, it's created by that mental energy where you feel as if you're not good enough, where you feel as if, oh, somebody has already blocked me out. There is no way I can push forward. Well, I do feel that everything is within your control. What you do this month is actually very, very important. What you do or don't do is going to solidify, cement the relationships or whatever energy is coming through for you for the rest of the year. So I feel like it is really, really important for you to push forward, persevere, push a little bit harder, and you're going to get the outcome that you want. So this is a card about victory through much struggle, okay? It's working with, with disparate energies. The energies are very opposing one another. So you have to like find a way to find a middle ground, balance out the disparate energy so that you can move forward and gain the momentum, gain the, the traction that you need in order to move on, in order to achieve success, okay? So push forward. The motto for this month is pretty much there's no reason why you can't, okay? If something, some barriers, some restrictions have been placed in front of you, figure out ways to get around it. Don't shy away from a either a confrontation, conflict, or a situation where you feel like you can't win. Um, nothing is written in stone. This is a time for you to revisit some issues that you might have like um, casted off to the side as a no-win situation. It's time for you to revisit this because I feel like the portal is opening and it's telling you be smart about this, be strategic, have a plan, and be very, very decisive. If you want a specific outcome, manifest it, think about it, and go for it, okay? Don't hold yourself back with self-defeating talks, all right? Now, in terms of the people that are around you, we do have here the sun as well as the prince of wands. So for a lot of you on the public image, on the career, on the success front, okay, you are exuding a very, very good energy. You can persuade anybody right now. This is a really, really good month for you to not only stand up for whatever it is that you believe in, you also want to think about ways in which you can free yourself from previous obligations, previous like negative pessimistic thoughts, ways of doing that limited you. So this is a month in which you need to really uh, figure out where is it, um, where am I exactly headed? What do I need to do for my long term, long term? financial, career, and professional success, okay? So think about, you know, for example, if you're like going through a nine to five job, that's a dead end job. I want you to take some time off and think about, okay, these are my dreams. This is what I'm aspiring to be. How can I get there? I can't get there by staying in this nine to five job forever, right? So it's, it's, it's time to strategize. So I, I know like, you know, when you're in the midst of it and you have a lot of bills to pay and you have a lot of responsibilities and you have a lot of like children, obligation, family obligations, wife, kids, dogs, mortgage, whatever it is that are piling on top of you and you don't see a way out. My advice is not going to, you know, be practical to implement. But what I'm seeing here is that this is a really important year for you. So I feel a little bit more strategizing. Thinking long term is going to be um, more meaningful for you. You don't have to execute anything right now, but I want you to think about ways in which you can secure a long term financial future. If you're in a job and it's like you, you don't see promotions, you don't see mobility, you don't see... Um, 
you don't see it panning out as a career. It's just a job. It's nine to five. It's every day, and it's monotonous. And you're not going anywhere. It's really important for you to seek additional schooling, additional education. Do that at night if you can. Do it on the weekend if you can. But I feel like you have to push through it. And I know it sounds really, really tedious and and hard and boring. And it's like going to be so like、um, insurmountable. It seems like there's this big blockage in terms of between you what you want and the goal. Okay, so it seems like there's this mountain between you and your your goals. So we have to plan things long term. Things are not going to come by, and they're not going to be achieved overnight. But anything that's worth doing. It requires a little bit of a game plan. It requires some strategy, and it requires you having the guts to go for it. Okay, so I feel like it's not just about guts; it's about long-term planning too. But I feel for a lot of you, there has been some money issues. There has been some grinding away, you know, trying to、uh, create financial stability. And it's not only financial stability that you're seeking. You want a job that is、uh, self-esteem boosting, is what I'm feeling. It's not just about the money. You want a job that has a, a good title. So it, you're very status conscious, and there's definitely nothing wrong with that. You want to set clear goals for yourself. You want a big office. You want, you know, like a nice view. You want a status that matches your credential, that matches the skill set. That you you value about yourself, okay? So if that is something that you want, if it's not just about the money, you have to strategize and try to get yourself there. But I feel like in the past there's this self defeating talk that you talk yourself into, and it prevents you from achieving your dream. So I feel like this is a really good time. It's Mercury in retrograde. It's not a good time to act, but it's a good time for you to slow down and for you to think about long term. Career goals, professional life, like what it is that you can do to give yourself a leg up. Okay,、um, once you are able to do this, you're going to have a lot of success. Okay, I do feel for a lot of you in the work front, you're traveling again. You're traveling so much again. So the chariot is a travel card. The Prince of Wands. This is like the Knight of Wands traveling. You're dodging from one place to the next, and you're not getting enough sleep either. It, this is this came up in March and it came up. It, it's coming up again. So once again, you're shuffling around. You're not happy. You're trying to make ends meet. You're trying to create something, but I feel like there is an easier way to do this. So I'm getting like same exact energy. The chariot card. You're traveling all over the place. You're like hopping hopping around. You're not getting very much sleep. Um, you're trying. You're like trying to to prove something. I feel, and you know, you don't need to prove anything to anybody except yourself. So figure out what you need to be happy. Work towards that. Have a game plan. Okay.、Um, now, there is some clash of wills here. Is what I'm feeling. So the King of Cups is your card, and the Prince of Swords. This is the Knight of Swords. Is another person's energy. And I feel like this might have come up last month too. So you're dealing with the residual energy. Okay, so for a lot of you, there, I feel like this is more in the love relationship department, and we're going to try to flush this out in a little bit with the love reading. But what I'm feeling as well is、um, there is a clash of egos. There is a clash of wills. First of all, you have an air sign in your miss, and air signs are Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and.、Um, I feel almost like this is you, the King of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But I'm reading this more as you. You have love and affection, and you know you want to take care of somebody. There is somebody in your life that you really, really want to take care of, and I do feel as well.、Um, there, I feel that they do care about you, but. I'm I'm seeing like a lack of communication. I'm seeing an impasse happening between you and the other person. I'm seeing as if you know you you want this person, but you're not making the moves. So the the king, he's a very receptive energy. If you look at the way he, he's、um, he's situated and just like the demeanor and the energy, I'm picking from this card. This is you. Potentially wanting a person in your life, but you're not taking the steps to show them that you're interested. Okay, 
their attention is fixated on something else or some on somebody else. And air signs are very, very like um, they're they're very analytical. And um, so what I'm feeling is they won't know that you're interested until you let them know. And in the meantime, they're caught up with a gazillion things that are going on in their own life. So if you're waiting on communication, you know, earlier, I mentioned there's waiting on some communication. Um, you have to be the first one to take the initiative. Otherwise, I feel that everything gets lost in the shuffle. They're bouncing around. So the Knight of Swords is the fastest moving knight in the deck, if you look at the traditional Rider Waite deck. So they have a gazillion things on their mind. They have like a million things that they need to take care of through their everyday, you know, trying to survive, trying to, to get through life. They tend to be a little bit forgetful. They tend to be a little bit curt with communication. So I feel like you might need to be the one to step out of your shell in order to forge ahead with the other person. If you are somewhat linked in with a water sign, so this is um, another Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, if you have somebody like that in your immediate environment and you're waiting on communication from them, for example, I do feel that in that case, if you're, then the energy is reversed. You are, I feel like, okay, so if you're dealing with a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, I feel like they have sent you some communication, but you were like traveling, jumping around, going, like hopping from one place to the next. That communication has um, either been delayed. You might not have gotten like uh, internet or either internet or uh, cell phone reception in order for the messages to come through. So I feel like there is some blockages in communication, either messages not getting through or you're butting heads with another person. You say one thing, but like the message is not getting through the, to them. Likewise, they're saying something, but everything gets lost in the air, okay? So I feel like sitting down and having a face-to-face -face conversation is going to be so much better so that you can like gauge body language, gauge facial expression, so that you can understand how you they are receiving you and they can understand how they come across to you. I feel like that's really important. Face-to-face -face interaction is going to be pivotal this month in order to get through an impasse or a stalemate. I see you, you're very, very busy. So you might not have the time to do this, but if it's important, it deserves FaceTime, okay? It deserves FaceTime. So do it through Skype if you need to, but either way, you I feel like you need to look the other person in the eyes in order for you to convince them or in order for you to relay some very important information so that communication doesn't get mixed up or it doesn't get lost, okay? Also, Mercury in retrograde is a good time to have face-to-face -face interaction anyways because of the energies for miscommunication. So in terms of your advice, um, cancers, um, so for a lot of you, what I'm feeling here is I'm going to, you know, reduce this to focus specifically on other issues and then we'll focus on the love situation later. But I'm feeling a heavy, heavy love atmosphere here. Um, for a lot of you, you are dealing with somebody, possibly a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, and um, a Leo. And you're not able to reach any type of a satisfying conclusion with this person. So I feel this person is very, very stubborn. They are fiercely independent as well. Uh, usually this person might have like a child in tow. So you might have a child as the king of cups. King of cups usually is somebody who might have a child in tow, okay? And then you're dealing with another person who has his or her own child as well. So I feel like working together to form a harmonious home environment is very, very difficult. For those of you who do not have children or not dealing with somebody with children, I feel that you both are at an impasse because you want different things in life. Also, they are a fire sign. It can be their sun, moon, or rising. So they're of a different element than you. I feel like they are looking for more FaceTime. They're looking for more affection. They're looking for uh, more of a common direction. Like um, 
they're looking for more of a commitment from you and it's not coming through. And as a result of it, you're busy. You're trying to, you know, plant seeds for the next phase in your life. You're also busy trying to secure that, you know, success on the professional front as well. And I do feel this is a person that, um, that wants something more from you. Okay. And I feel this is a very good person. This would be somebody that is very caring, very loving, very um, nurturing as well. So if this is, if you're choosing, if you're like balancing two people, if you're like um, going through the motions where you're juggling multiple people, the fire sign I feel is actually very good for you. On the other hand, if you are kind of like deciding between jobs where you're juggling two jobs I feel that you want to slow down a little bit and you want to make sure that you have the energy properly and if there is a there is a hard way to do things and then there's a smart way okay so figure out where you can streamline the work that you're doing so that you can conserve energy so that you can um uh, reserve some time left to do something else I feel that's going to be more beneficial for you okay there is a decision that needs to be made and I do feel that right now you're emotionally rattled and you're it's not good for you to make a decision. This is the month to plan things out but in terms of executing the uh, bringing the the plans into the real world, executing those plans, I feel there is going to be some delay here so wait until June or especially wait until the July time frame when the sun is in your constellation. And I feel like that's what it's telling you. Hold off on executing anything. Hold off on making up your mind. Hold off on any major important decisions, okay? 